The Mayan log count is about 2046. David Davidson, an engineer in 1920 and 1921, put together a 500-page book called The Great Pyramid, Our Divine Inheritance. David Davidson was an engineer, and he studied the Great Pyramid in depth. One thing he concluded was whoever built the Great Pyramid had geometrically encoded within it all different timekeeping systems. But he said the Great Pyramid itself was a calendar. And that calendar shows its own end date being in 2045. Now, 2045 and 2046 are pretty close together, but I found upon further research that the reason he concluded 2045 was because the Great Pyramid's begin date, according to his geometrical timeline that he discovered in the base diagonal measurements of the Great Pyramid of Giza, started in 4040 BC. And he admits in the text that it's just rounded off. It's in that area generally, 4040 BC. David Davidson does not know because he's been long dead when I conducted my research. But in my research, I show the Anunnaki Nur chronology. And in the year 4039 BC was the capture flood. It's when Luna appeared in our skies and it was trapped in our orbit. It was the first time humans had ever seen the moon. Now, according to David Davidson, that event started the Anno Pyramid. Anno Pyramid is the year of the, the year of the pyramids chronology. So, a major event a cataclysm, the appearance of our moon, a division in time among human cultures that began separating themselves between the Selenites and the pre-Selenites. Pre-Selenite culture were those who admitted that they were on this world before the moon ever appeared. They're called pre-Selenites. Emmanuel Velikovsky mentions them, but, but Hans Bellamy wrote whole books about them. He got some of his material in, from the guy in 1890s to 1902 named... Uh, Hor uh, Hans Horberger, a wholly, di a wholly different, a whole, totally different guy. But uh, my video last night or the night before last night where I, where I itemized different books, the books of power. Yeah, I mentioned Hans Bellamy in four of his books. Absolutely fascinating. Very difficult to obtain today. Some of them are lost. You can't even get them in one. But, but uh, Hans Bellamy is just fantastic. They were already old when Emmanuel Velikovsky published his thesis in 1950. So... Excuse me for a second. Oh, gotta love Starbucks triple shots. I might be talking 100 miles an hour here in a minute. So anyway, <clears throat> 2046. 2046 is the third trumpet judgment. It follows the Phoenix episode in, in the divine chronology, in the pyramid, anal pyramid chronology, in the apocalyptic timeline at 6.5 years after the Phoenix destroys much of the ancient East from China, Indonesia, uh, India, and maybe it's maybe maybe all the way to Babylon to Iraq, Iran. But that's where that's where the that's the center of destruction for May 2040. Um, the Western world are is pretty much gonna gonna be unscathed except for some coastal cities. Two cities that are focused upon in prophetic material that are going to be taken out by the Phoenix, very interestingly, are New York City and London. And those are captured operations anyway. Yes, agents of the Simulacrum have been in control of those two cities for a very long time. What's interesting is that there is a third city that matches New York and London, but it's already gone before phoenix something is going to happen in the ne next 18 years where vatican city is going to be nuked it's going to be completely obliterated it too is in the prophecies of nostradamus so 2046 is pretty harrowing but it follows and and don't think that the whole western world will die as far as people everybody dying because nostradamus is very specific about what trans what transpires between the, the May 2040 event and the 2046 event. He foresaw and put it in his quatrains, mass migrations of people, whole, whole cultures and races of people leaving the West after the first cataclysm, 
the Phoenix event, and going back to the lands of their ancestors' nativity, which is the Middle East. He even mentions whole mass migrations of people just passing across Europe. It's almost as if fleets left North America and landed in Europe in different areas in the Mediterranean. They just kept going east to repopulate. We're talking about a repetition of history. What I am describing in 2046 already happened in 3439 BC and started the entire historical record for which we know of as the hyperinflated story of the Anunnaki, which is the story of the Anuna, the founding of Sumer, Elam, Egypt, Harappa, Wa Waset, Urar Urartu, Dravidia. This was... Um, it's a repetition of history. What happened during the vapor canopy world is going to happen all over again. Exactly. Mass, this mass migration I'm talking about is very well known to scholarship. It is not known outside of scholarship. I have not seen Albert T. Clay over a hundred years ago wrote several books about this. It is mentioned by Layard. It is, it is Henry Layard, Sumerology. It is mentioned by uh, Samuel Noah Kramer. The original Sumerals, George Smith, was, was very aware. We have, after the Great Flood in 2239 B.C., a second wave of Westerners. The first one was 3439 B.C., introduction of the Anuna and Enki. The second one was after the Flood in 2239 B.C., North America was obliterated and totally destroyed in an impact event. <clears throat> Montana, who you know of as the Badlands, was hit by something. The survivors got in, got in ships and fleets, and there, were, there was probably half a million of them, but they came from all over North America and, and the UK, British Isles area, maybe Greenland, and they left because North America was obliterated. It was left uninhabitable. They got in their ships and they entered the Mediterranean, and this was during the fourth dynasty of Babylon, after the flood. Amraphel was sitting on the throne, formerly named Amar Udahak of Sumer. Later, when he ruled Akkad, the same man, when he ruled Akkad, he was called Merodach. But when Akkad collapsed in 1899 BC during the Tower of Babel episode, this man was still alive. He lived, he lived over well over 100 years. This man, this man was still alive, and in Babylon, they didn't call him Merodach. They called him Marduk. Well, the ancient Jews called him Nimrod. This is all the exact same person. He was on the throne. He was, he, he was on the throne. His, his, his name, one of his dynastic names was Amraphel. He is mentioned several times in the book of Genesis, in Genesis chapter 14. He was ruling uh, Babylon when Sodom and Gomorrah rebelled, and, and Kedo Laramor of Elam put together a huge confederation, and they invaded. This is the background story to Genesis when Lot was, was abducted with his family from Sodom, and Abraham had to go, to go rescue him with 318 servants. Now, the English translations of the text make it look like that Abraham was some type of superhero because his own household, his own household servants, his own household, maybe, maybe workers or, or, or some soldiers, and 318 men of, of, uh, of Amorites, and that's all it says, joined him. Mm -hmm. but, the, but the original Hebrew text go into much more detail. These aren't just Amorites, they're Gibberim. These were giants. These were Westerners. They had technology. They had they had uh, science. They were they were there was nothing ordinary about these men. They had just invaded the Near East and they were without opposition. They began what's called the Fifth Dynasty of Babylon. You know this in the history books. They gloss over it, but the main ruler. The Amorites put on the throne was the guy who was already ruling. They just changed his name. He's no longer Amar Udaak, Merodak, Marduk, Nimrod. He's not. He, they come and they name him Amurabi.